So hello and good evening, uh, good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. This is Ruth Pozzolo from Curval.com and uh, today is Friday. Well, not really, it's not Friday for me, but it will be for you when you're watching this. Um, as you can see, I've just came out of Microsoft Tech Summit here in Stockholm. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and I just uh, recorded this video right away. This is why you see me with this uh, Power BI branding on me. Uh, I have to catch up a little bit with other things. Um, but uh, in today's video, we are going to talk about calculate and we're going to talk about filter. And this is a video that was requested by one of you. I, unfortunately, I can't find the comment right now. But the question was basically, when do I use filter, the function filter in calculate and when I do not? Uh, he's been seeing that it's been used both with and without. Uh, there are actually rules of what you're allowed to do in that portion of the calculate. You know, you have calculate, you have the expression and then you have the filters. So there are a few things that you cannot do. You have to be aware of those. And then you have to be aware of also what happens if you add or not filter to your tax measure. And this is basically what we're going to talk about today. So um, how about we start? See you in a second. So before we jump into Power BI, I think it's good that we go through the rules first and then we can test the rules in Power BI. So if you, See here, this is the actual calculate expression and uh, or syntax, I would say. And you have two parts. You have the expression part and then you have the filter. You can add as many filters as you like. And um, what we are talking about here is when is it a good idea to have a filter function, you know, this one on there or where you can just have a column. This is a question that I got. And to answer that, uh, we need to know a few things about Calculate. The first thing is actually um, that this filter part cannot contain a measure. So here in filter, you cannot put a measure. It doesn't allow for it. And because it cannot contain a measure, then obviously it means that it has to contain a column. The next rule you need to be aware of is that it cannot return a table. So the result of the filter has to be a number, a text or a date. So this is actually going to explain the error that you get when you are trying to put a measure in there. Now that you know this, you will understand better what it's actually trying to tell you. So um, we start with this, we go to Power BI, we test this, and then we continue and try to understand what happens when you actually put filter into calculate. So here we are in Power BI, and this time we have a very simple table. It's just to make it like super clear what's going on. Uh, we have uh, an employee table, uh, we have an ID, a name, a status, uh, department, and a salary. Okay. And uh, we want to know uh, the number, how many employees earn more than 10,000. Let's say that. So we go to new measure, salaries over 10,000. And then you will go calculate this number of employees is a count, count of employees, and then you would probably want to do, okay, I want total salaries over a thousand. You're going to get this error. A fu function calculate has been used in a true false expression that is used as a table, and this is not allowed. So no measures by themselves on the filter part. You're not allowed to use them. So how do you actually write this measure? Well, you will go in here, you add filter, filter requires a table first, and then you are good to go. You actually now have 
how many employees have a salary over 10,000. But you need to use filter because you cannot have uh, measures on the filter part of calculate. So what can you have? Well, here is one example of something that you can actually have. Let's say that we want to know salaries, as so the number of employees that has salaries uh, pending. So it's a calculate and then the number of employees and then um, you have a department, department there is equal to pending. And if you do that, you will get how many employees have. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, um, that would be much better, right? Okay, there we have it. So now we have on the filter part a column and text. So column text, column number, column date are allowed and you will get a response from them. You can actually add more. You could have and department equal to LA. Maybe there are no pending LA departments. No, so let's put terminated. Terminated. And we have two. Right, so now you can see when you can actually use naked columns or just columns in Calculate, on the filter part of Calculate. Well, otherwise in this person you won't be able to use them anyhow. So now let's move on a little. Let's do like this. We are going to have salary spending. We're going to copy it. I wish we could copy measures easily. Please, Microsoft. Uh, pending with filter and we are going to put here filter employee and you're wondering why I'm not using filter tax formatter takes too long, sorry, but these are not complex functions at all, so we should be able to manage without. So here we have salary pending with filter, we have calculate number of employees, where the status is terminated and the department is LA, but we're using filter, so it's exactly the same that we had before, but we're using filter. So we go in there, we're going to make it a table, we're going to put our new salaries with filter and is given us the same results. So far, so good, fantastic. Now, what happens if I select you see? It gets a blank. So if I select delivered blank, pending blank, and terminated blank for the one that has filter on. Why? And to know this and to understand these, we need to go back here and uh, read in here. It says calculate function changes the context in which the data is filtered and evaluates the expression in the new context that you specify. I have on the glossary two videos on Calculate here. So I will put, of course, the link below so you can watch these videos in case you haven't done it yet. So we'll go through detail with Calculate. But the distinction is very important. So what it's saying is Calculate ignores the filters. It means that whatever we choose in here, Calculate doesn't care. And give us the right answer. Now, when we put in filter, there's another game. Filter, what it does is it's actually taking into account the filters that we are applying. So if I click on delivered, of course, if we remember our measure, there are no 
this is just for terminated or LA. So basically it's trying to evaluate these with this table and the count is null. There are none. The same with pending. Only when we choose terminated, we get the same result. So this is a very important distinction also when you're using filter and when you are not using filters, whether you are ignoring the filters that you have applied or you don't. Okay, so I hope this is clear. You'll have the file for download so you can play with it. So I hope I managed to explain how or when you should use filter in the calculate um, function. If you want to know more about calculate, I have actually two videos on calculate and one on filter. And I think I talk about this topic and you can see also how filter behaves and how calculate behaves. They are a bit old, uh, but they are still actual. Uh, so just go ahead and check those out in case uh, you still have some doubts and, and you want to know more about those functions. Um, I will see you again on Monday. If you have any suggestions for a Monday video, um, Power Query, uh, just let me know and I'll put something together. And um, yeah, enjoy your weekend and I'll see you again on Monday. Have fun. Bye.